literally this householder life, which is the void of any sentiments towards God, which is the void of religiosity, and which is godlessness. Yeah, godlessness. Uh, this type of householder life, which is centered around the bodily conception of, of life, asat grahat. Asat means that which is not real, that which uh, is temporary. So this material existence uh, is real in the sense that it is the creation of the Lord, but it is it is temporary, and when this material life is conducted devoid of any realization of God, opposed to the will of God, then that is called asat. Sat means that which is true or real, and asat is just the opposite of that. So asat grahat basically means to accept that which is unreal as real, to accept this body as the self, and to accept uh, one's family members as one's possessions, uh, to accept the objects of this world as being objects merely for one's own exploitation and enjoyment. This is a sabgrahat. So, due to this type of conception of life, householder life becomes like andakupam. Andakupam means a blind well. And Shilgurdev has told this story many times about uh, the blind well. Um, I can tell it in brief. <laughs> Um, that one day a person was going through the forest or the jungle and then suddenly a lion roared and began to pursue him so out of fear he began to run and of course uh, there's no possibility of escaping from a lion so he thought to uh, run up a tree but he was una unable to do so, and then he, he noticed a well which had been grown over by grass, and he thought, my only hope, my only hope is to uh, climb down the well. And there were some branches hanging from the tree, uh, so he took uh, support of those branches which were hanging down, and then he climbed down the well. So he got halfway down, and then he noticed that there were many snakes hissing at the bottom of the well. And by this time the lion had caught up and was uh, peering over the edge of the well and was roaring at him. So from both sides there was great danger and he was very fearful and he was hanging on to the branches for dear life and then he noticed that some rats were eating away at the branches. So a very precarious situation. <clears throat> And the rats, one was white, one was black. So, at that time, danger surrounding on all sides. Uh, from, from above, there was a swarm of bees in, in, in the tree. And that was also another danger. But <clears throat> they had a hive, and there was some very sweet and pure delicious honey which was, began to fall in drops, one drop at a time, very slowly, from the beehive. And as it came down, it was coming just beside him, so he was able to uh, stretch out his tongue and catch the drops as they were falling. And as he caught them, he was thinking, oh, this is a very wonderful taste. So, <clears throat> this is uh, this material existence and Householder life, the void of spirituality, the void of God consciousness, is compared to such a blind well in which there is very, very uh, insignificant enjoyment. Everywhere they upside, inside, sides, everywhere, in eight corners. Everywhere they. So, death is surrounding on all sides. <laughs> The rats represent day and night. So every day, or at every moment, our life is being reduced. They are cutting branches of our life. Mm -hmm. And the tiger is, or the lion is like uh, time, uh, which is death personified. And the snakes are like, what? 
What are the snakes compared to? Also, they are So now the surrounding bees, various types of suffering. All family passions. Uh -huh. All <laughs> making so much problems. All at a time. And sweet honey was coming among them who are beautiful, my wife and children and all these things. But also problem is coming from, may come from here. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the situation of materialistic household. At any life. moment we can die. So, so Prahlad Maharaj, he is uh, explaining this to his father. And he is saying that what you have undergone severe austerities to attain because Yogi Kashipu performed such severe austerities that no one uh, before had been able to do. He was standing for a hundred celestial years on the tips of his toes with his arms extended high in the air and so much so he had attained such power that fire was emanating from his head uh, which was reaching to the heavenly planets and was actually perturbing the, uh, the devas, the demigods there. And in the meantime, an ant hill had surrounded his body, and the ants had eaten away his body. So all, all that was left were the bones and the life air circulating within. So he had, he had performed severe austerities, more than any yogi, but only to obtain material enjoyments and um, to try to get material immortality. So Prahlad Maharaj, his five-year-old son, is saying that all your hard labor uh, has been in vain because your situation is just like this, is like this blind well. So the best thing I have learned, and not from my teachers, but not from these teachers, but from my real teacher, uh, Narada Muni, is to give all of this up and to go to the forest uh, forest means Sadhusam, association of Sadhus. Now no forest like this. <laughs> so not just to go to any forest, but it means because especially in those times, the Sadhus were taking shelter of the forest. So go to the forest means that by going there you will meet the Sadhus, the saintly persons, and you will hear instructions regarding uh, the Supreme Personality of God, Sri Krishna. And to take shelter of those sadhus and take shelter of the Supreme Lord. So this is how he responded to his father's inquiry. Mm. Then what his father did? And he at once took that his son and fell down. And went to kill and murder. But this. And he began to rebuke his teachers, Shandavar. Shukra means, Shukra chat means, what? Controller of sediments. By this birth and death comes. How to take birth? He knows that. And if a man dies, they can sprinkle some water and at once he will be. Again, and life. And he can give birth to life and life. He is Sukhraja. And his son, Shanda Marka. Shanda. Shanda means wife. Always. Always. Five failures. For any cow. Oh. They are failures to each other. Only. That he is taking my share, he is taking my share, all the In one which he did that, we shall be and all other, we are all finding each other. For self gain, for nothing. So all are Sanda Marka. That all, that all. We have not taught him to chant and to take side of Vishnu. We have not done. So he is telling himself all these things. He told that are any Narada or any allied persons are coming and associating? 
Don't allow anyone to come to his court. Never. And if they are coming, then a report to me and I will see. Anyone should not exceed. You should teach him only Sham, Dham, Danta, Bhed. What is this? Four types of political policy. What? <coughs> Sham? It's to control others uh, with sweet words. Uh, Sham, Dham, Bhai Bani. <laughs> I can tell you a big decision. Right? Yeah. Some, some, dunder, punishment. And, okay. Creating a division. Divide and conquer. Oh. This country is so well known for this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are ruled by this policy. Whole world. But now, they are not able to control. Scotland, Ireland, <laughs> Wales, <laughs> they all want to be independent. Here, all Rajaniti, Rajaniti, fell down. It is not forever. What fell? But he wanted that, Hiranyakashpur, that I am making a king shall be so. Uh, so, expert in all these things. <coughs> so, why not? They should learn some down, down the way, all these. Duplicity, for what? Diplomacy. For a king, for a son. A Rajkumar, the prince, it is very essential. He wanted that my son should be expert in all these things. But Prahlad has. Uh, read so many things, has taught so many things by Nagarishi. Now he has no, nothing to learn. But his two teachers prayed king that place again we should have a chance. We want to trend this war in your line. So please give us again kindly can get and one more opportunity. And for some months to try to teach him same thing, duplicity and all some dumb kind of way. So that he after me he will be very strong king like me. But after some time when he again called Pralad Maharaj, his son and very affectionately he took him in his lap and told you have been given to school. I think that now you are learning something. So what is the essence of all teachings you have been learning? Please tell me in very brief. Then what Pranath Maharaj told, Namin will explain. Don't uh, close your eyes. You should not be in trance. <laughs> Otherwise, Nidra Devi, sleepness, very beautiful lady. <laughs> she will attract you and then you will fall down. <laughs> and nothing you can learn. You are seeing that old person is standing there, how is smart and looking you all. So, <laughs> you should be very smart. His age was at that time when this picture was made, um, more about 80. So, Hiranyakashipu, second time sent his affectionate son to school of Sanda and Amarka. Just now, we heard from Gurudev that Sanda means wild bull. And I want to repeat so much. 
Amarka means Arka means light, means sun, and here there is no illumination of God. It is called Amarka. So when Hirnaka Sibu called Rakishan again and asked him, Oh Prahlad, now you spend so many days in school, please tell me or explain me in brief which you learn in your school. Prahlad Mahaj is so bold. He quoted one slogan, Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasa Sakkamadvani Vedanam Not he quoted. He told He told himself. <laughs> not quoted from anyone. At he, that time Bhagavat was not. And not he not quoted from any scriptures. He told by himself. Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Bandanam Dasta Sakhamatma Nivedanam Iti Pumsar Pita Vishnu Hottis Chenavalakana Kreed Bhagavata Dhatan Manya Vitavam Udita Muttamam Oh my dear father, I think this is the best philosophy. What? Tan Manya Adita Muttamam I think this is the best. What? Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu We have to hear about Vishnu. Here Vishnu means that Krishna and his all incarnation and Guru and Vaishnav who is related to Krishna, related to Vishnu. Savanam. At first, in the first day we have to hear from qualified Vaishnav and Gurudev. If we not hear, if we have no Savan, then we could not Kirtan. We are not able to do Kirtan. So at first, we have to savan, we have to do he, savan means we have to hear from Guru and Vaishnavas. Kirtanam Vishnu. And after that, when you are expert in savan, then you must do Kirtan. Savan Vishnu Smaranam. And you have to remember about Vishnu. That means so many pastimes of Vishnu. According to your stage, according to our stage, we have to remember the pastimes of Vishnu. For primary stage, we can remember about pastimes of Putana. How she kept liberation? Putana means put means pavitra, pure, na no, means no. Who has no impurity? And put means son and no means now he has no son or no kids at all. So we are full of anarthas. So we are impure. Oh Krishna, oh Vishnu, you are so kind. You take out all his impurity, please take my impurity also. I surrender myself in lotus feet. So you have to remember this kind of pastimes in primary stage. Padasevanam. Savanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam. Padasevan means Padaseva. We shall do Dham Parikraman and shall message Vaishnava and Buddha's feet. It is called and we shall do Archan is Father Seva. Archanam Bandanam Dasa Sakhamadva Nivedanam. Archan, worship of deities. Divi We are to think we are so unqualified. Gurudev is very near and dear to Krishna and Vishnu. He is worshipping. According to his order, I am helping him only. I am not worshipper, I am a helper only. This is the Vaishnava rule, Vaishnava etiquette. Bandhanam. Bandhanam means we have to do some prayer. When we are doing devotional activities, there is some chance of offenses, Nama Parad and Seva Parad. If you continue chanting Harinam, then Nama Parad will go away. But for Seva Parad, Nama Parad is 10 times, and Seva Parad is so many, but among them 32 is prominent. 32 kinds are prominent. So if we do a disturb every day, then it will go away gradually. So we have to do bandana. And that's a Sarkhatma Nivedan. We have to think, we have to behave with Vishnu Krishna that he is our master, I am his servant. And Sarkha, friendly come with Krishna. Like Sridham, Subal, Vasudha, Madhumanga, they are friendly term with Krishna. They never think 
that Krishna is supreme personality of Godhead. If Krishna wants to say something, Siddha is telling, I am not inferior to you. Your father is my last cows. My father has 11 last cows, so I am superior to you, not inferior to you. Subal Madhumangal, Ujjal, they also love him, making fun with Krishna. They never think that Krishna is superior to us and is supreme person of the Godhead. If this kind of mood is there, the opulent mood, then you can make a difference with God. So, we have not to look at it. As the more we will chant and the more we will follow Guru and Vaishnavas, this mood will come automatically without any effort. Dasta Sakta Atmani Vedan. After that, we have to surrender ourselves. At first, we have to surrender ourselves to the Lotus Feet of Gurudev. At last, this Gurudev will help us and he will do to convey this surrender to Krishna. Atmani was two types. At first, we don't know what is our soul. We have no conception about our soul. So, we think that it is mind is soul, this body is soul, but it is not. So at first, which Guru will order us, we have to follow totally. After that, uh, Atma will come, then we can surrender our soul to the seat of Krishna. So Prabhupada is telling, Atma, Sarvanam Vittu Lupa Iti Vishnu. You have to surrender yourself, the lotus feet of Vishnu, at first. If you do so, then it will be bhakti, limbs of devotion. If not so, it will not surrender yourself, the lotus feet of Vishnu, and you are doing Savan Kirtan. It is not devotion properly. So we have to surrender ourselves, the lotus feet of Krishna, through Bonafide Gurudev. If we do so, then it will be devotion, other then it is not devotion. Like I say, I want to give an example. There are so many qualified persons here. If they want to take any job from government office anywhere, if he is learned, but if he has a certificate from any university like Cambridge, Oxford University, then they are allowed to enter their office and they are allowed to sit for computer examination. If not so, they will kick you out, they will allow that your application is perfect or not. <laughs> Similarly, we are chanting Mahamantra, but if we surrender the Lotus Feet of a Bonafide Guru there and take his shelter, <coughs> then Krishna will grant us as a devotee, otherwise not. Because in Bhaktivinoda Kirtan we see, we have seen that Saranda Saranavati Hari Vejahar Tahar Prakthana Sune Srinanda Kumar, who have Saranavati, then his prayer will must grant by Nanda Kumar. So we have to surrender ourselves to the hospital of Bonafide Guru Dev. Someone can ask, who is Paralama is Guru? Narad Gisi is Guru Dev. When he was his mother room, he learned everything. So Narad Gisi teach everything about 60,000 years when he was in mother's womb and he learned everything. So Prahlad Maharaj also teaching us and instruct us that if you want to be eternally happy in this world, you have to surrender yourself, let us with Guru Dev, and then you can do bhajan, then you can get liberation sadhis of Krishna. Hare Krishna. Banchakar Vataru Bhaste Kipasim Dukhaye Vacha Paditaran Pavale Bho Vishnave Bho Namo Namaha. Prem Prayajan. Can you explain more? Iti Pun Sarkita Vishnu Bhakti Shivan Novanakkana Kriya Bhagavati Abdha Tannan Dhekhi We should explain more. Being there, Om Gyanana Jindana Sarkita Vishnu Oh no need, don't waste time. So good, Shila Guru Dev has supported me to Iti Pum Sarkita Vishnu Bhaktis Chayang Nava Lakshana Kriyati Bhagavatthada Sanmanyai Pidam Uttamam Prahlad Maharaj has described nine processes of bhakti of devotional service and he has said that one who has dedicated 
who has surrendered his entire life uh, and has taken up the practice of this uh, nine types of bhakti, he is considered to be the most learned person. He has understood everything. Of the nine processes, the final process is Atmani Vedana, to surrender. But in the next verse, Iti Pumsa Tho Vishnu, Bhaktis Chandna Vilakshana. Pallad Maharaj is saying one should surrender first. So this appears to be some contradiction. Don't surrender, offer anything. Before surrendering yourself, first yourself should be surrendered. And then do anything, then it will be bhakti. And you are thinking that I am not qualified, I am not surrendering myself, I will offer my some fruits to Krishna like Jatkaroshi Jadashmashi. Then it will be not pure bhakti. It will be some Arup Siddha, a mixture of all karma and jnana. So we should not go towards that. Prahlad Maharaj is Suddha Bhakta, and that is why he wants that all should be pure devotee, not mixture. So there is a. Understand something? You should try to offer yourself. But Krishna is not there, you are not meeting with Krishna. So you should first surrender yourself in the lotus feet of second Vishnu, Ashraya Tattva Vishnu. Who is Ashraya? Ashraya Bhagavan, Shevak Bhagavan. That is servant God. Who is he? He is good. Shiksha Dhuman, Shiksha So we should surrender how we are, don't think that we are qualified, unqualified, what you are in that state. You should offer yourself. He will make you qualified. He will make, make you sincere. He will make you bona fide. You cannot be yourself by your own activity. You never, never and never you can be. So what you are, you should offer yourself in the Lord of Street of your Guru Dev, that is Shevak Bhagavan. And thus it will go to Lord of Street of Krishna. Then you will be you will hear from him Samadam Kritam Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam Archanam Bandanam Dasyam Sakram. And then by hearing by your Guru Dev, Siksha Guru Dev, everything will be qualified. And then you will know that who am I, my body, my senses, my atma, everything, and then you will do atma nivedha in the last. Okay. Then, what we can? Oh, hearing the name of Vishnu, and hearing that, he is not telling anything that I wanted of some dam, dam, the way, all the duplicity and duplicacy and politics, he is not telling anything. How he came? He will be a very qualified prince to become a very good emperor like myself. He will not be. So he became so serious. And Vishnu has killed his brother, so he was an enemy of Vishnu. So he never liked to hear the name of Vishnu. And he never liked that my son should be in the party of Vishnu. So he became very serious and was kicked and wanted to murder. He ordered all. He is all soldiers and the commanders, commander in chief, to advance him, but they could not. Mad, mad elephants were brought there to crush Krishna. Oh. They went and when they saw a smell of a smell Pralad Maharaj, at once they began like mad and roaring they running and trampling trumpeting that quickly ran off from there. Some serpents were thrown out, but they quickly ran but opposite side. Why then they are given? No one. They were thrown to, from the hills, mountains. Nothing but 
Krishna took him in his lap. We were thrown in the midst of endless ocean, but Krishna came like a boat and took him to sight. And Prahlad Maharaj, waiting in pain and love and affection, how sweet you are, how you are saving me. So you should have strong faith to Krishna that he will surely save us and protect us from all kinds of problems. Don't fear for this. <coughs> Prahlad Maharaj has shown these things. And he becomes so disturbed. What should I do? I think that I can control all world. I can put to death all. But I see, I'm seeing that death is coming through my this ignorant child. What should I do? He began to tremble and think. He could not do anything to this very little weak, five years old son. Then Sukrajar's son, Sandamarga, they suggested not to be buried. My father is coming just now from his trance. From trance, he will come soon. And he will make very soon any arrangement that he will. This boy will be in line very quickly. You should not worry for that. We will again taking him and until our father comes, returns, and he should be sent in his school. And we will always keep God that Narada or anyone cannot come here. Thus, he was satisfied and he told that all oh, you should take. But then, he also told, who has trained these boys? I think that you have. Then bring my soul and I will put it on your face, both Shanda Amarka. And they began to turn it. <laughs> then he asked, I to go. To serve Krishna? So we know that. Naishamadis, Tam Urukramani, Shat Anatta Urukramani Jadatta. Mai Shampadraje Vishetum. Yes, we explain. and faith you should listen all these things and try to take follow all these things. So the teachers of Blood Marat Sanda the Marker, they asked how he had learnt um, so much about Bhakti. And Pallad Maharaj, he was hiding the fact that previously he had been within the womb of his mother, Kayabu, for some 60,000 years. He just said, oh, just naturally, spontaneously, I feel devotion in my heart towards the Supreme Lord. And he never really revealed the whole truth to them. But he was hiding this. So when he was with his friends in school, so when he was with his friends in school, then they were, they wanted to play you know, before that. So they were asking, they were asking they also, say, from where you have learned all from where, from where you have learned all this? They have not turned you? Why? And being so much, what? Let's act it, act, acting, and growth, and His face was, his face became very reddish. I is ready like ready and he was asking. Where from where? Then he began to tell. Sandra Where there? So then he put then he's he not to point it. Then he stated this verse. Nasan Matis Tabat Urukram. No, don't read that. Oh Naisan Matis Tal Urus Kramang read like this. Very old. Oh, yeah. 
So in English, I'll say, he said, unless what is smeared upon their bodies, the dust of the lotus feet of the Vaishnava. I want that you should let the uh, sing a lorry for sleeping boys. Oh, sleep, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so unless one has smeared on his body the dust of the lotus feet of an education of Vaishnava, one who's completely free from all material contamination, then those who are very much inclined towards material sense gratification, they cannot become free. So only by becoming Christian conscious and I, taking I like that. that you should not see the book and You should take the only by uh, essence of this this book. Only by becoming Krishna conscious and taking shelter of the lotus feet of such this kinchan of Vaishnavas. So this kinchana Vaishnav means one who is a kinchana, this kinchana. He has no material possessions, he has no material desires. Yeah, I know they don't want. Not only does he uh, that Krishna not have is, that he took the Christian no. He never wants all these things. Like um, what uh, uh, rock ashes. Ashes that no value so all these is no. So just as um, one will see ashes, and for them it has no value. For, so for uh, this Kinchana, Bhakta, then all the wealth in the material world, it has absolutely no value. But the only possession is that... It seems like poison. So they have like that with this thing. Easily, like a stool. So these material possessions to them, they're just like poison, or as Maharaja stated, just like stool. Later on, in this pastime, Pallad Maharaj, he also will manifest the symptoms of a description of Bhakta. When Nishingade, Lord Nishingade, he asked him, um, what benediction can I give you? And Pallad Maharaj, he refuses to accept any benediction. Because for him, um, to become implicated in any way in um, material wealth, um, gain of any sort, that it is just like, as Maharaja said, it's just like stool. Um, so, such Vaishnavas, who, they, they do have a possession, and that possession is that they have the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. It is stated, Krishna say toma, Krishna ditepa, toma sakatiyate, amito kandala, Krishna krishna bolitaita, pachi pachi. That one who is in this kitchen of Vaishnav, that they have Krishna that they've got Krishna within their hearts, and that is their real possession. So, Prahlad Maharaj, he's telling Hiranya Kashipu that unless one takes the dust from such a Vaishnava who has Krishna has, as his possession, and sees all of, all of the material possessions as being no more valuable than stool, then one cannot become free from material desires. Hearing this, what Hiranya Kashipu thought and told? So, oh, uh, foolish boy, hmm? you are telling that uh, I have nothing learned my, from my Gurudev and my Gurudev is bogus, foolish, and I have not learned anything from me, and I am foolish, you are telling like this, oh, only you are so much intelligent. So, I have not cut a grass tree, grass has whole life. My guru is so, so much um, qualified in all these things. I have learned so many things that I have become, Ajar Amar I have become, immortal I have become. Do you know? Polish, why you are uh, teaching me all these things? I know all things more than you. So it's to make you should be. Stop your telling. But Pralat Maharaj continued. What? Nate Vitu Swartha Gating Vishnu. Durasa Ake Bhidat Kamana Andhaja Sandhai Rupa Yamana Vati Sasap Kantya Purutam Nibata. What is the meaning? Now they prabhu. Dhamma Bikali. 
Very quick. And we just had a strong way. In the same way as Hrindakarsu and Prahlad Maharaj are talking. <laughs> Prahlad Maharaj told that, oh, I am not telling you I am your Gurudev police, but I am telling the truth. Hmm? So, <clears throat> this is saying that those who do not know that the ultimate goal of life is Vishnu and devotion unto Vishnu, they have accepted a different type of teacher and they are actually blind themselves. They do not know the goal, so they are blind. And the teacher that they accept, have accepted is also blind. So if you have uh, a blind a group of blind people, and they are also being led by another blind person, then what do you expect the result will be? That they will simply all fall into the ditch and thus be misled. So this is uh, the result of uh, accepting the guidance of persons who are actually in ignorance about the real goal of life. <laughs> that have gone to my Guru there and thousand years I have attended his close and hearing his always sounds on the face and all controlling to know the ways how to control whole world and foolish you are telling me that you are blind I am not blind, you are blind Prahlad Maharaj told that I am not telling you but I am telling the truth that those who don't follow Krishna or Vishnu that don't serve, they don't chant, they don't have no um, okay. <laughs> Devotional services to Vishnu. Practically, they are all blind. In this world, having eyes, very rare person. All are blind. Their gurus are also blind. The disciples are also blind both. And though, both like them, if anyone is taking the help of any blind person and he is himself blind, then what will be? They are going to see a match. They have no idea. Cricket might be going to in France and England. <laughs> or Australian side. Caribbean has reached here and had it cut off for one going up and down. They are going to. They have no idea, but they want to test. And in the midway, one has some. Lot is steep and other has, and this has strictly pursued, otherwise the play match will be finished. So we should quickly go. And there was a very big bad feet and both fell down. So those who had not eyes to see Krishna, to serve Krishna, chant Krishna, remember Krishna, they are all blind. So all the gurus are like these bogus gurus. They cannot give a proper way. They cannot direct. Then Andha, Vedas have two modes. Interior and external to fire sacrifice. Gomed, Arshamed and so many. Gomed means cows offering and horses offering and so many things, but only to have swarga. And from there again they will come here. And again lacks and lacks times, birth and day, suffering and sorrow. Nothing gain they have. So to follow this is it externally. So all the demons they follow this idea. By Vedas we should tell truth, 
we should practice these five sacrifices and all these things. And they want only happiness in this world or outer of our Nishwarga. But they are never satisfied and never happy. And those who have some inner eyes, they will see that oh, Vedas has always telling Vedas are that you should uh, chant, remember, and go to Vaishnav Sadesh to Krishna. The Ushka Pakti Path Vedisha, Vedu Ka Pakti Path Vedisha, subject to be described as Vedas. Vedas, only Bhakti and Bhakti and Bhakti. Bhakti Ravainam can take anyone to Krishna. So, when he heard, again, again he became so more, 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 more confused. That he is telling my Gurudev Shukra that, that he is blind. If anyone is not blind, then you can tell him blind. He will not be serious. But if anyone is half Half blind, half blind, some blind. Then if anyone will tell, oh blind person, come on, that will be very serious. So his guru was one eye blinded, you know. Mm. Who did it? Maman Dev has Bali Maharaj by the The Baman Mahar Baman Mahar Baman Dev has done this. Mm. Those who will give any make any problem in Krishna service, in chanting and remembering, blind. he will be blind. To be blind by both eyes is better than to be born blind. He will some what see and some what not see. So he became so clear that, oh, he is uh, criticizing my Gurudev and also me that I am his disciple, so he again did. Then he told that who then who has taught you all these things? Tell frankly, otherwise I will kill you. Then he told Naishamati Stavat Uru Kramam. Naishamati Stavat Uru Kramam. Ispishatanartha Yapagamo Jadar. Maniya Sangpadar Jogi Sekam. Nishtin Chananan Nabini Tayao. Very good thing. Very good thing. Very good thing. You can tell? Oh, what? Tungi? Little Tungi? Can she say? Where is she? Sleeping? <laughs> what she is doing? Oh, I will punish you. What is the meaning? Can you explain? No. Who oh, else? Well. You can. I am praying. Nisha Amatis. Stavat Uru Kamani. Ispishata, Ispishat Anakthu Apagamara Kijata. Mahi Yesham Bhadi Yosh. I Here, Lord Maharaj is describing that, but he is not criticizing, but he is telling truth naturally. But he is becoming angry that he is thinking that he is criticizing and telling me and my Gurudev like blind persons. So, Hirani Kashipu, he wants to know from Pulag Maharaj, how have you come to be so devoted like this? So Pulag Maharaj is answering him here. He said, Matirina Krishna Parato Sova Mitopi Pagate Vihavratayam Adanta Gopi Gopi Vishatam Tamisha Pura Pura Stavata Chavanayam That for those persons who are very dedicated, Vihavratayam, they have taken 
the vow in their heart to dedicate themselves to material enjoyment and uh, godless household life, then those persons, their inclination towards Krishna can never be aroused, either by their own efforts, by the efforts of others, or by a combination of the two. Instead, those persons, they make very rapid progress in the direction of the darkest regions of hell. And they engage in madly chewing the chew. Many, many lifetimes they have enjoyed sex, eating, sleeping, fighting, power, money, fame, and so many things in so many lifetimes. They have chewed these things already. And again they chew, and again they chew, and again they chew, like this. So they waste their life. How will any auspiciousness come around for them? So for this, to explain this, the Lord Maharaj has spoken this verse. My Samad is Tarat Parukramam Grim. That those who are averse to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who have turned away from Him, their natural tendency is to enjoy the sense objects of this material world. They can, that, that tendency can never be changed. They cannot turn around and have natural devotion towards Krishna. They are not just the unwanted things within their hearts. They will never disappear. It is not possible. But one, one thing is possible. That there are not as it will disappear. If they can get the touch of something, what is that? They will have to take Abhishek. They'll have to take back. They'll have to smear upon their entire bodies the dust of the lotus feet of an Iskinchen Vaishnav. Only then will their aversion to Krishna and their attachment to the material world become completely transformed and turned about. A natural and spontaneous devotion to the Supreme Lord will be awakened in their hearts only by the touch of the dust of the lotus feet of a Miskinchen Vaishnav. Very cool. And oh, he was so much disturbed and became so much upset and furious. What to do? And what to do? He began to. His own years he began to. What to do? What to do? He could not think anything. I'm, I'm going to be defeated by this little boy, which I get But now he is he's so desperate to me. I wanted to give a lesson to him, but I cannot, I cannot. What should I do? And then quickly, the two teachers took Prahlad out, out of his sight because uh, if he will be in the sight of Hirindakastu, he will be so much excited, going up and down and he will be so hurt. Mad. Mad, like mad. So I should take them both. They, should, they took us and they began to take Prahlad Maharaj. Quickly, quickly, come on, follow me, follow me. And Prahlad Maharaj, what do Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Thank <laughs> you. 